Welcome to Treasury One's weekly market review and it's already been a busy week with an interest rate announcement that's still to come as well. Credit ratings agency Fitch has fired a warning shot calling on the South African government to keep its debt to GDP ratio in check or face a further downgrade into junk territory. Failing state-owned enterprises and municipalities have drained the fiscus, none more so than ESCOM, which, by the way, is possibly coming into more troubles of its own. Its former chief operating officer, Jan Oberolzer, will officially exit ESCOM at the end of the month, and the Minister of Energy has expressed doubts about Kuburg's refurbishment timeline. Unit 1 is scheduled to return to service this July, with Unit 2 being taken out in September. And if this process overlaps, leaving both units out of commission, it will wipe out electricity generation equal to one stage of load shedding. So, with all these problems, I guess it's not surprising that capital is fleeing our shores. 91, South Africa's biggest asset manager, has lost nearly 110 billion rand in assets under management in the past three months. It is a staggering amount. So, Head of Research and Director at ETM Analytics, George Klenos, and myself discuss some of the reasons behind the capital flight, the implications thereof, the possible solutions to stem the flow. It's available on ETM Group's YouTube channel, or you can listen to our podcast, Reset the Frame, on Spotify. On the data front, mining production for May came in weaker than expected as the industry continues to struggle amid domestic infrastructure failings, a global slowdown and soft commodity prices. The data on manufacturing production for May holds the silver lining. Although the year-on-year -year growth was slightly lower compared to April, the highlight is that there was any growth to begin with, despite an intense month of rolling power cuts. So, at least that's something. Before I get to our road to expectation for this week, the RAND has taken advantage of some dollar weakness. The greenback is teetering near a one-year low after last week's inflation report came in softer than expected. Real directional momentum, however, might only follow Thursday's decision. And although the RAND may have given the SARP some breathing room, inflation remains above target. The MPC will also have one eye on U.S. expectations, where the Fed is expected to uprate by at least 25 basis points at the upcoming meeting before hitting the pause button. So with these factors in mind, we're expecting a 25 basis point hike to be announced on Thursday before the SARP will have some space to hit the pause button themselves at the meeting thereafter. Over in the EU, the ECB's June policy meeting minutes confirmed that the bank's fight against sticky coinflation still has some way to go, with markets expecting 50 basis points still to come in this hike cycle. This outlook then is contributing to the deterioration of economic sentiment in the bloc. Then over in the UK, the tighter monetary conditions are filtering through, with the nationwide price index declining in May for the first time since December. The economy is starting to feel the pinch, with a slight contraction recorded between April and May, and we're expecting the economy to flatten out through the next quarter or so before further weakening into the end of the year. The Chinese economy has failed to rebound as much as markets would have wanted. The economy has lost momentum in the second quarter. It did manage to record 0.8% GDP growth, but that's still slower than the 2.2% recorded in the previous quarter. Then trade data for June also out last week showed a contraction in exports for a second straight month, while imports also declined by 6.8% year-on-year. It's becoming clear that without additional policy support, the state is unlikely to achieve its 5% growth goal for the year. Apart from Thursday's rate hike decision, CPI will be out on Wednesday with a slightly cooler figure of 5.5% for June expected. Retail sales will also be out on the same day with another contraction expected year on year and that's due to a slowing credit cycle and pessimistic consumers among other factors. International releases we'll be looking at include June's inflation figures for both the EU and Britain. Wednesday's releases are expected to reflect a slow rate for both. The week will also be dotted by various U.S. releases, retail sales, industrial production, housing starts, as well as the U.S. leading index. The data is expected to reflect the slowing economic conditions amid the tighter monetary cycle. We'll also be tracking the fallout from the Black Sea grain deal. Russia says it has terminated the special deal between them and Ukraine, which provided safe passage to Ukraine in exports, including wheat. It holds the potential to keep global food inflation elevated and possibly put food security at risk. In fact, wheat futures already started increasing following Monday's announcement. 
Now, Russia possibly terminated the deal as it seeks to up its fertilizer exports, which it claims is being hampered by Western sanctions. It should be noted that Russia has shipped record amounts of wheat since last year. World leaders are reportedly trying to sway Moscow to extend the deal, but we will have to wait and see if they will pay them any attention. That then the week that was and the one to come for the markets.